Hi, this is Stephen Cornegay from This Is Just a Thought for Anchor Podcasting. You know, when I first got the idea for podcasting, I was lost. I mean, I didn't have a clue, but after some research, I discovered Anchor. So I said, why not? I mean, it's free, and I love free. It's easy to use. The creation tools are extremely helpful. They allow you to record and edit right from your phone or computer. It's especially helpful for those that aren't too tech savvy like myself. You can make money from your podcast with no minimum listenership. It's everything you need to make a podcast in one place. So download the free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started. Good morning, good morning, good morning. The sun is shining, the birds are chirping, and you are breathing. Today is Monday, July the 25th, 2022. My name is Stephen Carnegie, and welcome to This Is Just a Thought. Today's word of the day, speculate which means to meditate on or ponder a subject, to reflect, speculate. Hope everyone's enjoying that Monday. Back to work we go, back to work we go. Not for me. I'm still on vacation. Had to take some time off and uh, just relax. That's all I did thus far. I went to the beach for a couple days and I relaxed. And now I'm back and I am still relaxing. Hey, after uh, the past couple years, and of course, you know, Dylan's a day-to-day life, we all need that time of relaxation and me time. And that's exactly what I have been doing on my vacations. All the things that I want to (laughs) do, I just have, I just have. Uh, The heat, the heat, the heat, the heat continues. Uh, Of course, they're saying today we may have a few... uh, rolling thunderstorms or thunder showers but uh the big thing is the heat uh heat indices today are 105 plus and we've been dealing with this for man the better part of, of, of two three weeks uh i don't know if you can ever get used to it but man it is hot and you can tell when you go outside hey like i said i went to the beach thought i could get a little relief uh-uh. <laughs> didn't happen it was hot there it's just that time of year. It is just that time of year. And of course, you know, we have those wildfires out there on the West Coast. Man, um, what more can you say? This heat and then wildfires. Boy, uh, praying for all of those that are out there that may have lost homes or are getting ready to lose homes because they're saying there's one particular fire that is no way, no how contained. It continues to grow. Praying for those people out there on the West Coast, man. And uh, moving along here, man, looks like, uh, wow, the WWE chairman, Vince McMahon. You know, I love my wrestling. (laughs) Uh, Looks like he's no more. He retired after uh, pretty much sexual harassment charges. Uh, He retired late last week, and it was made official by his daughter coming on SmackDown Friday. And announcing his retirement. Now, the, the, there was a former WWE employee or wrestler that made claims of his inappropriate behavior along with another employee. Now, we all remember um, uh, the, the, the WWE superstar China before she passed. She had came out with some tales about locker room antics. And hey, it, it, it's, it was just known. But you, you, I hate to hear that because um, if you follow wrestling, you know that WWE at that time was WWF was at the bottom of the heat. It, it just was. It was doing bad. And, you know, Vince McMahon's father started the company and he took over. And, you know, they said he did some unscrupulous things. Uh, maybe, maybe not. But he bought WWE to the forefront and it continues to be at the forefront. They have a lot of things going on in WWE, but, you know, as as odd as it may sound, 
on the premise that he built something from the ground up and took it to new heights, you hate to hear that all because he couldn't keep his hands to himself. Man, but wow. Uh, it's been a great r- ride. I got to say, I thoroughly enjoyed <laughs> watching him and, and how he would spin his storylines. And, and of course, we all remember that attitude era with him and Stone Cold. <laughs> uh, employee beating up on the boss. Everyone loved that. I know I did. I got a good kick out of it. But man, certainly hate to hear that. Uh, looks like Triple H is going to be taking over. Uh, in charge of creative control, however they word that, along with his daughter, Stephanie. And, of course, I, I would gather that uh, Shane McMahon would be in the back also. So he announced his retirement. He's no more with the WWE. Man, hate to hear that. Hate to hear that. And uh looks like President Biden has COVID. Now, he's in quarantine. He's been in quarantine uh, tomorrow and make his fifth day. So if he tests his negative tomorrow, he may return to work by Wednesday. He's been having the mild symptoms, you know, the dry cough, runny nose, and fatigue. But uh, other than that, his, his the White House doctors are, are saying that, he hey, he's he's doing just fine. He's, he's had a little sore throat or whatever, but uh, he's still working. Even though he's quarantined, he did a, a, I guess you would call it a video chat, a video call last week. With, with some members of some uh, department. And, well, you could tell that his voice was off. But, man, man, that that Omicron subvariant is is here. It's doing it, its thing. It just is. But we'll see what happens. If old uh, Fighting Joe can test negative tomorrow, he'll be back to work. Just will. Just will. We'll see what happens. We will see what happens. All right. Let's go get it. Man, uh, as I previously mentioned with President Biden and his fight with COVID, that Omicron subvariant 4 looks like it it appears, I should say, that the dark side of COVID continues on another front. And it's, it's more specifically tied into those on the front line, the nurses. Now, three big hospitals here in North Carolina are releasing numbers at a hospital here, uh, another hospital here in North Carolina, Rocky Mount, to be specific, announced it was temporarily suspending its ICU operations last week due to the nursing shortage. So we have a nursing shortage because of COVID. Well, COVID is, <laughs> is just attacking on so many levels. It won't stop. Good grief. Man. Now, what this hospital in Rocky Mount is doing is saying that they're encouraging patients to uh, go to Greenville, Greenville, North Carolina Medical Center. There's a medical center in, in Greenville or Wake Med here in Raleigh or Duke and Durham or UNC. The, the nursing shortage has gotten that bad that you have to close down an ICU. It appears that way. Now, if you're thinking, well, they must be, you know, the the three hospitals that I mentioned, Wake Med, Duke, and and UNC, you must be saying, if you're saying to yourself, uh, their nursing staff must be uh, up and running, uh, that's a negative. They're also experiencing a shortage. Now, Wake Med is at uh, what they're saying is 27% short on nursing. Duke is at 9% short on nurses. UNC is at 1,300 short on nurses. They have openings. Now, because of this nursing shortage, the North Carolina uh, Nursing Association chimed in and it backed it up. It backed up the fact. Now, Rep said that the shortage could last a decade or longer. That's right. 10 years or longer. This nursing shortage could continue. Man. Man. Uh, now, what she or, or, or what the representative said is mainly due to the continuation of COVID. And now this BA5 variant continues to put pressure on the remaining nurses on the front lines. Now, as it goes for those that haven't left the profession, because that's what's happened. COVID, we all remember way back when, a year or so ago, we talked about 
how they were saying there quite possibly could be a nursing nursing shortage. And here we are now. There is a nursing shortage. A lot of those nurses were overworked and just drained. So much so uh, that rep from that nursing association said, hey, a lot of these nurses that are still here, they just haven't had a break. It's been a, it's been a continuation. From from the regular uh, uh, the regular COVID to the uh, uh, the what was the other one the Delta variant and now you have the Omicron and all its sub variants these nurses that that are still sticking around they've been rolling straight through they haven't had a break man that's um, that's really it really makes you think and and, it, and you, you really have to acknowledge. And, and understand what COVID has done and continues to do. So much so, another aspect of this with the uh, nursing shortage is the aspect of the schooling. That It has become a problem also. What they're saying is there, there's limited number of seating because of faculty availability, faculty shortage. So if you're in, if you're fortunate enough to get it, they, they're having to turn people away from nursing school because they don't have enough faculty to teach. Wow. COVID. For whatever reason, uh, those that were once teaching, and maybe I, I know at one point, I can remember uh, way back when also, they were saying those that were teaching, a lot of them decided to, uh, if they were nurses, they became traveling nurses. Apparently you, apparently you get paid more as a traveling nurse. So if they still had their credentials up, they decided to stop teaching and 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 quite possibly become a hey a traveling nurse. They just did. So I mean, just wow, what in the world is going on here? COVID, COVID did it continues, but uh, there are some positive that is coming out of this because uh, what was discovered or what has been said for those that are for, fortunate enough to be in nursing school, uh, they're getting a lot of on the job training now. And and they'll, those all, that on the job training is pretty much leading to immediate uh, job offerings. So a lot of the hospitals along with that on the job training, like I said, while still in school, hospitals are, are wrapping up their recruitment and retention efforts. They're enticing students with uh, higher pay, bonuses, and adding new benefits. Wow. So we have a huge problem. Well, it, well, it can quite possibly turn into a huge problem with our nurses. Peers, we have a nursing shortage. Hmm. And for that hospital in Greenville here to say that they're shutting down their uh, intensive care unit because a lack of nurses. That's eye opening. It, it, it just is. Uh, I knew it was bad, but I didn't know it had gotten this bad, man. And we knew that it was going to get bad because, like I said, year a year or so ago, way back when, when we talked about the uh, the quite possibility of nursing shortages, they were saying that it was coming. And now you have those with the North Carolina Nursing Association saying this shortage could last a decade or more. You know, it's, it's like when, when I, I told you guys that I had listened or I was reading about uh, the effects of COVID as it relates to the financial sector here in the United States and throughout the world. They were saying we were going to be digging out from up under this for decades and decades Hell, our kids' kids may be trying to rebound from COVID. And and this backs it up. It didn't take a long time for us to realize, because I, I, I can remember doing a podcast about this about a year or so ago. And, and that came up. So it didn't take long for us to, to realize or for it to come into fruition that there's a nursing shortage. We are in need of nurses. And if you're saying to yourself, well, you know, hey, nursing is a great profession and it is. It's a great career move. If you enjoy working with people and you have that great bedside manner, it is great. It is outstanding. But let's be honest with each other, just like with those doctors. 
a lot of these nurses, these nurses were on the front lines from the beginning. They just were. And they saw a lot and had to go through a lot. And, and, and now it's showing. A lot of them said, you know what? Enough is enough. This just, you guys just don't pay me enough to deal with this. So they left. So now we have, you know, not just here in North Carolina, but it's going on throughout the country also. There's been talks of that, that there's a nursing shortage, that people aren't uh, going into that nursing profession anymore. Uh, it's time consuming. It drains you. And it does. It just does. It does drain you. Uh, if you think about it, I mean, patient after patient, day after day, week after week, you're in that hospital. You know, at the hype of the, the COVID outbreak, a lot of those nurses and a lot of those doctors and a lot of those other uh, hospital staff, they never went home. They were they were at home for not just weeks, some for months before they got some semblance of a break. And that appears to be the contributing factor for why these nurses are leaving. They're overworked. They're not getting time off and to themselves. I mean, there's only so much a human being can take. And it appears, well, these numbers tell the tale. And that rep from the uh, nursing association, she put it out there pretty much that it was mainly due to the continuation of COVID. And now, not just from COVID, but the, the, the those BA5, the variant of Omicron. They're having to deal with that. Uh, hospital rates are, are climbing or cases of COVID are climbing. Uh, you know, they're saying those numbers are going to rise and and they can't get a, a an actual number because of, a, of those at-home COVID tests. A lot of people aren't reporting that they have COVID. So these COVID numbers may be higher than we thought at one point in time. It's a continuation. COVID continues, just like we talked about. We knew that it was going to, you know, when at the beginning when they talked about uh, the initial run of COVID, they spoke about it breaking off and, and creating different types and subvariants and whatever, what have you. And it looks like we are living through that right now. Man, it, it, it's, it, I have no words. I don't. It, it's, it's certainly uh, sad, and, and, and there may be some patients that may suffer because, uh, I, dare I say, even though that, that hospital here in Rocky Mount is telling people to, hey, go to uh, the, the medical center in Greenville and here in Wake County with Wake Med, Durham with Duke and UNC, I got to ask and I got to wonder how many of these people could actually make that trip. If you're accustomed to being in Rocky Mountain, they're telling you to go to Greenville. I mean, Greenville is, is, is a ways away and, and Wake, Duke and UNC is even further away. What if these people can't make that trip? What if they're in need of an ICU bed today? I think a lot of people are going to suffer. Uh, we're going to have a lot of patients that are, are going to suffer and are suffering from this, this nursing shortage. Man, it, it certainly makes you wonder and realize also the effects of COVID and, and how it, it operates I honestly can tell you, I never thought I would see anything like COVID. It is attacking on any and all levels of our existence, our day-to-day -day living, our day-to-day -day dealings. You know, right when we thought we was breaking, we were breaking stride, we were making some lead way, boom, here comes those subvariants. So we're we're at a place now where we're, we're short on nurses. I wonder what the numbers are for the doctors. I wonder if the doctors have have left. There was talk about that also a year, a year or so ago. Maybe they'll follow suit with the nurses. Maybe they will. It, it, it's just uh, astonishing and shocking, but it, it we had to know it was coming. Perhaps we didn't know it was coming this soon. Man. Uh, quite possibly a decade or more before we get nurses back to where they're supposed to be. 
all because of a, a virus that for two years now we've been fighting. Opens your eyes and makes you think and makes you wonder, doesn't it? I know it does for me. I know it does for me. Well, I'm going to make this short and sweet today. Uh, like I said, continue to um, pray for those out there on the West Coast. Continue to pray for us here on the uh, this side of the United States as we deal with this heat. But the, especially for those on the West Coast as they deal with those wildfires. Man, uh, if you're going out today or, or going to be out for a prolonged period of time, hydrate. Put on that sunscreen. It's that time of year. You can't ignore it. Just can't. Well, you won't ignore it too much when you go outside that door. <laughs> Feels like the sun is just about to scorch your skin off down to the bones. Man, it just does. This is a different kind of heat and a different kind of sun. Just is. Just is. And also continue to pray for those that are in need. And I see you up there in uh, Rocky Mountain. Man, nursing shortage. Man, that, that, that hey. I think uh, if if I can say anything or, or put anything or put a bug in your ear, uh, continue to watch out for COVID and, and what the, the side effects are. And I'm not just talking about the physical. I'm talking about, hey, like I said, our day-to-day -day dealings. The side effects or the continuous effects of COVID, man, it ain't letting up. And quite possibly, dare I say, uh, we may be seeing some more sub variants also. Just me. And that monkeypox uh, outbreak or, or, or however you word it, it's ramping up also. It just is. So we got a whole lot going on <laughs> in our lives, in our dealings. It seems like uh, at some point in time, like I said, we were we were thinking or hoping we were breaking stride. We were making leeway. And now we know that we're still here. It, it, it is what it is. It's going to be what it's going to be. It just is. Just is. Well, I'm going to get on out of here. Uh, like I said, if you're going to be outside, hydrate, man. Drink a lot of water. I know I did. Uh Really need to go outside and do some yard work, but I don't think that's going to happen. <laughs> I don't think that's going to happen today, buddy. Maybe maybe later on when it cools off about 7 or 8 o'clock. Yeah. Uh, hey, I ain't built like I used to be. I can't go out there and do that heat all day anymore. I just can't. I just can't. I just can't. Well, that's all for me today, and I want to thank you all for lending me your ears this morning. Continue to like, support, share, offer feedback. Anchor has a great feature where you can leave a voice response, and I would love to hear your voice. So offer feedback. You can also make monetary contributions. Continue to follow and listen on Anchor, Spotify, Google Podcasts, Breaker, Overcast, Pocket Cast, Radio, Public, Verbal, and WordPress. And as always, wherever you are listening, hit that like and subscribe button so you can stay in the loop when I drop these podcasts. And as always, this is Stephen Carnegie for This Is Just a Thought. Amen.